I don't know if you would classify this as a scary encounter with some unknown humanoid being, but it was certainly strange, to say the least. I was out camping alone by myself in Arizona. I was on a small bluff, overlooking a little valley, maybe about 50 to 100 feet down. It wasn't that high up. It was early morning time. I was climbing out of my tent, making myself a cup of coffee, watching the sun rise above the horizon. It was simply breathtaking. But then something happened below me, in the rock. Keep in mind, I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere, maybe a few miles from the nearest road. I have no explanation for why this happened. The ground underneath me began vibrating, and vibrating very heavily. It gradually increased until I was literally shaking. I was convinced it was an earthquake, but after gradually increasing and climaxing till about 20 seconds in, it suddenly stopped. And along with the heavy vibrations, and what I thought was an earthquake, was met with a very loud mechanical humming noise that all sounded like it was underneath me, like some large machine. After it stopped, I was pretty confused, but I didn't waste any time. I packed everything up and moved back on down the trail that I was hiking on. Maybe there's some sort of machinery underneath the rock, or perhaps maybe there's a military base. I don't know. It's all just speculation. But I will say that that experience was probably one of the weirdest I've ever had while being out in the middle of nowhere. When I was six and seven years old, my father, my uncle, and my grandfather would all take me to this really cool lake right near where we lived. I can't remember the name of it. It wasn't a natural lake. I'm pretty sure it was man-made, but my uncle, father, and grandfather all loved to fish in it, said it was the biggest and best trout they had ever had. One day, they were sitting there, fishing, talking, having a couple of beers, and I was off, maybe a hundred or so feet away, playing with sticks right by the tree line. I remember feeling a strange breeze blow on me, like warm or hot air. This was in June or July, so it was summertime, and not surprising to have a warm breeze, but it felt unnatural, and even in my six or seven year old mind, I understood and knew that, and I felt like I was in danger, which is interesting. Most six and seven year old kids don't really pick up on that kind of thing. We haven't got our feet wet yet in the woods, but somehow I just knew deep down there was something wrong. I remember it being a beautiful day, but the woods and everything around me were silent, other than the laughter and cutting up of my granddad, uncle, and father. And for some reason, like by some unseen force, I felt driven to go deeper into the woods, like something was pulling me or I was being led. I'm not sure where, but I just felt the need to go deeper. And so I got up and began walking in the direction that I felt compelled to go into as I began to walk just outside of the eyesight of my family. I heard them yelling and calling for my name. The problem with this is that the noises, the people calling for me, supposedly my family, were actually coming from deeper into the forest. So I had to stop and think, even at six years old, wait a minute, my dad and family are over in the opposite direction. I honestly felt like I was in some sort of trance, and my legs just kept moving, even though I was trying to rationalize this at six years old, and trying to pull my way out of it. After maybe a couple more minutes, now my family was completely out of eyesight. They were too busy to even notice, and I found myself trying to pull myself out of this trance, and eventually I broke free, ran back to my family, and the entire time this is happening, I began feeling this immense feeling of danger, like something bad was about to happen. All the while, I was getting closer to the voices mimicking my family deeper in the woods. And it wasn't just mimicking my father. My grandfather, uncle and father, were all calling me, come on, come on, come here, using my name of course. I didn't actually end up making it to the area that I was being called to, but I was pretty darn close. 
Had I walked maybe another 100 yards, I would have been there, and there's no telling what I would have encountered or seen. I ran back to my family. I told them that somebody was calling me from the woods. My uncle and dad got up, went to go check it out. They were both armed. My grandfather sat with me next to the lake, told me all about stranger danger, and my uncle and dad came back, said they didn't hear nothing or see nothing. It was probably just the wind. The day resumed as normal, and as my life went on, I never really thought about that day much. But as I've gotten older, and heard so many stories of skinwalkers or weird things going on in the woods, I can't help but think of this story that pops up in my mind. I had no idea that mimicking the voices of family members was even a thing, until I discovered skinwalkers and beings like that. I can only really speculate that that's what was waiting for me. And after reading all the missing 411 books by David Politis, I don't even want to know what it is that was going to grab me, assuming that's what was going to happen. I just wish my family would have took it more seriously. But I guess they did go out and look for me. I mean, what more could I ask for? So, I would really like your opinion on this. Do you think it could have been a skinwalker? Or maybe a Bigfoot? After reading a lot of the missing 411, Maybe I could have been the next victim. We weren't close to any national parks. This was just a small wooded area, away from our rural community. Any answers you can provide, or any speculation, would be much appreciated. My cousins and I ended up renting out a cabin for the winter up here in the mountains. While it's always been a beautiful and serene experience, there was one winter where we had an incident that a lot of us just don't talk about. It's actually quite terrifying, and after listening to many of your videos, I realized that it can easily constitute as its own scary story. This was back in the winter of 2007, so it was me and my three other cousins, my parents and extended family. We have a pretty large cabin that was built, so we can all sleep in it pretty comfortably. It has a huge wooden stove, and my family is always keeping a giant stack of wood around to keep it going 24-7. Temperatures around here can plummet very low, and we of course like to be warm, just like anybody else. So, one night, we're all sleeping, me and my cousins in the main living room area, or the lobby if you call it that. On the side of the cabin is a large set of sliding glass doors. On the front of the cabin is a large wooden door. Both are attached to a large wooden deck that wraps around and has a staircase leading down to the ground. One night, while staying up with the family, talking, and of course the parents were drinking, so they were being obnoxious, and us cousins just wanted to kind of get away, so we decided to move our operations into one of the bedrooms to have just us time. We were playing a very intense game of Monopoly, and it was getting pretty serious. At one point, one of us looks out the window in the bedroom, notices that it's snowing very heavy, and kind of gets worried that we're going to be snowed in and not able to leave. This was this particular cousin's first time coming up here, but we assured him that this happens every winter and that we're going to be totally fine. He was also the youngest out of all of us. He seemed so fascinated with the heavy snowfall, but we weren't really concerned about that. We were just trying to finish this Monopoly game that seemed to go on and on forever, as it usually does. When it wasn't his turn, he kept going to the window and just watching the snowfall, completely mesmerized by how heavy the snowfall was. When, at one point, closer to later at night, he began freaking out, saying there's something coming towards the cabin. We kind of dismissed it, thinking, oh yeah, there's large black bears out here. We're not surprised. And then he's like, no, guys, it's running towards the cabin. A large, black, hairy man. So we all jump up and look out the window. Across from the cabin is a small little hill that dips down, and then dips back up on the other side. Running down the hill towards the direction of our cabin was what I swear was probably a Bigfoot. It was a man, covered in all black, we didn't see any faces, but it looked like a giant man running through the snow. And already, there was probably four feet of snow. He didn't look like he was having much problems. And he was huge, 
right next to the pine tree. In that moment, though, I wasn't thinking Bigfoot, but as an adult, that's what it had to have been. So all of us boys are screaming. We run out and try to tell our parents that there's a Bigfoot about to run into the house. They all just start laughing and joking, thinking we're just seeing things or making things up to try and distract them from drinking. So we all run to the window and look out. We don't see anything. And now all of our parents are telling us, come on, stop it. You guys are acting ridiculous. If this is your idea of a joke, it's not working. We tried convincing them of what we saw. They just wouldn't buy it. So we stood on the lookout, kept looking, but this large black man that we saw outside disappeared. We kept trying to dare each other to go outside and see if we could see him, but none of us were brave enough. And I think at one point or another, we finally fell asleep. Somehow, the next morning, we woke up pretty early, eager to go outside and see if we can find any tracks, but the snow had fallen so heavily over the night, there were virtually no tracks left. You could see very faint indents in the snow of where this thing came barreling down the hill from, and you could see the general direction that it took. It went right up against our cabin, actually, and even most horrifying, appeared right outside our parents' windows, like it was right underneath, looking in, probably sometime in the middle of the night. This chilled us to the bone. We even went back in and tried convincing our parents, but again, they didn't believe it. They thought we had made the tracks up and simply would not listen. This large black shape seemed to be the hot topic between me and my cousins all day long. We'd go back and forth between playing, goofing off, and then talking about what this thing could be. One of us speculated that it was a big monster, while another speculated that it was some lost man trying to break into our place. We didn't know for sure. We were just 12, 13-year-old kids, trying to come up with the best explanation we could to whatever this person or thing was. As it got to about dinner time that night, and we're all sitting around getting dinner and eating dinner, we hear the loudest scream any of us have ever heard. It stops everybody in their tracks, and everybody in the cabin looks out towards the back window where the scream came from, far off over the hill. We all said, what was that? And all of our parents, straight-faced, looked at each other, looked at us. Nobody said a word. The rest of the dinner was pretty quiet, and I knew in that moment that they knew that wasn't just a bear or a coyote or an owl. That was from something none of us have ever heard before. And right before bed, probably maybe eight or nine this night, a few of our family members go out and gather some more wood from the outside shed. They both come back in and let us know that we're actually going to be heading home in the morning. Things are going to be cut a little short. There was hushed conversation between the adults. We all knew that they knew something was up, because this usually lasts for four to five days, and we'd only been here for two or three. There is no reason why we should be cutting our trip short. They acted so weird about it. Even now, I wonder, what did they know that they never told us about? And why? Did they see something? Did they hear or encounter something? But when they came back in and announced it, nobody was asking any questions or objecting. It was like it was a done deal. Enough said. We're going to go with it. So, that night, everybody packed up their stuff, and we left the following morning. No questions asked. I still wonder why that's the only time we've ever gone up there and have had such a short trip. It's never made sense to me. And since that winter trip, we've gone back up there a dozen times, easily. Have never experienced, saw, or heard anything like what we did since. We also don't ask about it. It's kind of like a don't ask, don't tell policy, I guess. But I can guarantee you that something happened up there that winter. Whatever it was, I'll probably never know.